In this video, we're going to talk about managerial accounting. Now, most of you have probably heard of financial accounting. You know of things like uh, income statements and, and balance sheets. Uh, but, but managerial accounting is different because it's basically for managers. Okay, so when we talk about managers, what we're talking about is that we're going to create some information, some info within the firm, and then we're going to give that info to managers to help them. So you might be thinking, okay, well, what kind of information do managers need? Why do they need this information? What what are we doing here? Uh, so so let's just think about let's think about an example here. So let's say this example that uh, that you start a business that that you're going to manufacture uh, furniture. So you start your own business, you're going to manufacture furniture and and it becomes a pretty large furniture making organization you have a lot of different divisions and, and you're trying to run this company and now we're going to figure out how does managerial accounting uh, how is that useful to you in, in, in your organization so the first way we can think about managerial accounting being useful uh, we can think about it in terms of helping with planning now you might think okay well I can plan for my organization without managerial accounting well, what, what does this have to do with it well a big part of managerial accounting is coming up with budgets Okay, so we're going to have, you know, we're going to have a marketing budget. Uh, we'll have budgets for all the different divisions uh, based on what we expect uh, that, they, they, that they're going to end up spending. Uh, we can budget out all different types of, of costs, uh, what we think this is going to cost, what we think that is going to cost. Ultimately, uh, we're coming up with a plan. That's what a budget is. We're just saying, okay, this is a plan uh, for what these costs are, are anticipated or expected to be. Um, and, and more specifically, uh, we can start thinking about things like, okay, if we, we produce, if we produce um, you know, X number of units, X number of, of units, what is that going to cost? How much marketing? How how much? How many marketing dollars should we throw at that? Uh, you know, what is what is going to be the cost in terms of we think about like overhead, raw materials? What what are all the costs? We're going to do some planning, and just kind of kind of look into the future and say if we can plan out our costs and, and put together these budgets and so forth. But but managerial accounting isn't just helpful with planning. It also helps when we think about decision making. Okay, so now we say. We say, okay, well, you know, we looked at the cost to produce a number of units, uh, but but should we go ahead and sell those same units to a customer who maybe offers uh, a certain amount? Let's let's say somebody says we'll give you a thousand dollars per couch. You manufacture furniture, so you got couches. A thousand dollars per couch. A customer offers you, uh, and 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 they say that they'll buy. 500 couches. Now you might think, okay, well, how do I go about determining whether I should sell uh, for $1,000 a couch? Now we can talk about things like supply and demand. We can talk about what the market, what we think we can charge. We can talk about all those things. But at the end of the day, at a minimum, uh, we should be able to get back our cost. We should not be selling uh, that couch. Uh, for less than what it costs us to produce it, unless we had a really compelling reason to do so, like market penetration or something like that. But typically, you want to, at a minimum, have this this benchmark and say, okay, does this thousand dollars a couch does that does that match uh, what it costs us to basically produce a couch? And it's not so easy to figure out how much it costs to produce a couch uh, because there's all kinds of costs that that maybe can't be directly traced to this couch. Uh, maybe there's marketing expenses, there's headquarters expenses, there's all kinds of things. We don't just think of the material cost of that couch, and we have some we have some decisions to make in terms of what we'll actually include here, uh, in terms of you know cost X, cost Y, cost Z, which ones are going to go in. But ultimately, uh, we're gonna we're gonna plan and we're gonna come up with some kind of idea about the cost to produce those couches, uh, and then we're gonna make a decision about whether it's a good idea uh, to accept this customer's offer. We're going to use managerial accounting uh, to help us make that decision. Now, managerial accounting is also very useful when we talk about directing and motivating. And again, this kind of gets into this idea of that we can allocate costs through this process called cost allocation. And this is 
this is where it's really going to get into the motivating. You might think, well, how do I motivate my employees, or how how does how does you know cost allocation or, or managerial accounting? How does any of this have to do with motivating my employees to do their job? Well, let's let's think about this for a minute. Uh, let's say uh, that you allow your employees to take paper. Okay, they can take paper from work, and 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 they can use. Uh, they can use it at home or whatever. You just say, just take all the paper you want. Well, if you don't charge them for that paper and just say, okay, this is free, well, what are they going to do? They're going to take a lot more paper than they would if they were being charged for it. So now you can think about, okay, well, if I charge them for this paper, if I say, okay, now there's going to be a cost to it, they'll behave differently because then they'll start saying, well, wait a minute, I don't want to just you know take all this paper because it's actually going to come out of my salary. And it's the same way with cost allocation, right? We can think about, for example, if, if you have multiple divisions, you have, so you have your firm, oops, sorry about that, you have, you have your firm and you have, let's say, uh, you know, you've got, you know, three different divisions and, and you go ahead and you say, okay, well, you know, we've got, We've got we've got utility expense. We've got we've got a light bill. We've got all these utilities, and, and we just get a bill at the organization level, right? I just get some bill. I'm the CEO, but these different divisions they all contribute in some way toward that utility. Now, am I going to allocate? Am I going to split up this utility cost among these different divisions here, or am I just going to say, you know what, just ignore that? That's not your responsibility. Well, if I ignore it, if I don't uh, allocate this cost, then those uh, division managers and so forth, they're going to behave a lot differently uh, because they're not being evaluated on that cost. So maybe they leave the lights on. Maybe they don't care about reducing the, the utility expenditures. But if I allocated these costs, now all of a sudden they have a reason uh, to pay attention and try and make sure uh, that these utility costs are as low as possible. So we're kind of motivating them and changing the way people behave based on what costs we allocate, and this is all part, this is a subset of managerial accounting is cost accounting. So we can also think about controlling costs. When we think about controlling, well, what do we mean? Do we just mean controlling spending? Well, to an extent we do. So what we're talking about here is we can look and do things called variance analysis. Uh, now, variance analysis is, is a whole topic in and of itself, but in a nutshell, basically what we're doing with variance analysis is we're saying, okay, what was our planned spending? Okay, what was our planned cost here? What was what was the what did we expect that we were going to spend on, on the raw materials or whatever? And then what was the actual cost? What did we actually spend? So think about it this way: you say, okay, well, I think I'm going to buy, um, you know, a hundred units of, or uh, spend a thousand dollars on raw materials uh, to build these couches, right? So I'm going to spend $1,000. That's the budget. That's the plan that we talked about in step one. But then we find out that actually, after the period over is over, we look and we say, okay, well, we actually spent $1,200. So now what we have is we know that, that we overspent here by $200, more than what we ex actually you know, set out at the beginning of the period. So now we can go about and think, okay, let's, an let's analyze this and let's think about uh, are we doing a good job controlling our costs? Now, maybe there's a legitimate reason for this $1,200, and after we've analyzed it, we go ahead and say, you know what, that makes sense, and that's fine. But this is kind of, it's basically giving us a way to kind of like highlight this and analyze and say, okay, here's something that we should be looking at. We've got this difference here, and, and it might be an area where we're doing a poor job controlling costs. So we're basically using managerial accounting and, and this variance analysis tool uh, to help us control our, our costs. So lastly, we can think about managerial accounting in terms of performance evaluation. Now remember I said we can look at the firm uh, potentially as different divisions, right? If you have different divisions at the firm and, and you have division A and you have division B and then you have division C, right? Maybe one makes couches, one makes love seats and so forth. However, you split the firm up and you look at these different divisions and you say, okay, how do I evaluate the manager uh, of division A versus the manager of division B and C? How can I go ahead and, and measure that? Because if we just look at, at like the income statement or something like that, that's for the entire firm. 
Okay, that's for the whole firm. And maybe, you know, we're the CEO and maybe we don't, you know, not that we don't care about what's going on at the firm level, but we want to dig deeper and say, let's go ahead and let's see if we can compare these managers to one another and see if they're doing a good job. And, and what metrics do we compare them on? Well, that's up to us. Right. If they have some kind of responsibility for generating sales uh, and then they also have responsibility for some costs, we might come up with like kind of a divisional profit. We might say, what's the profit of division A, the profit of division B and the profit of division C. But if they don't really have any responsibility for sales and all they're really doing is basically manufacturing something or whatever. And it's really just they're just kind of responsible for costs, then we might just look at costs. And we can come up with whatever kind of metrics we want because this is managerial accounting. It's just done for internal purposes uh, to help us run this furniture, manu uh, this, this furniture manufacturing company. And so we can create whatever metrics that we think are useful and none of it has to follow GAP.